Hello and welcome to this Ionicon webinar. My name is Philip Sulzer and today I have the honor to introduce my colleague Markus Müller. Markus is an internationally renowned pediatophemus expert who did his PhD at the University of Innsbruck. He was involved in a series of milestones in pediatophemus development, like the first pediatophemus instrument at the University of Innsbruck, and most importantly, he was involved in the development of an online aerosol inlet for PTATOF-MS. Today, he will talk about a real-time aerosol inlet for our ptatof instruments, which allows for quantitative detection of particulate matter. Okay, Markus, so please start your presentation. Thank you, Philip, for this kind introduction. This is the first part of three on-demand webinars introducing our Coron Particle Inlet. This time I want to provide some useful background on the instrument and the methodology. The second part of the series will focus on applications. First of all, let me introduce Caron. In Greek mythology, Caron is the ferryman of Hades who carries souls of the newly deceased from the world of the living to the world of the dead. In our case, Caron stands for Chemical Analysis of Aerosol Online. Instead of carrying the souls of newly deceased to the world of the dead, it transfers particulate organic matter from the particle phase to the gas phase. As the name already indicates, Caron is a direct method to chemically analyze submicrometer organic particles in real time. Caron PTMS basically consists of four parts. Our gas phase denuder on the left side efficiently absorbs organic gases but transmits particles. These particles are then enriched and subsampled by an aerodynamic lens system. A thermal desorber transfers the particulate organics plus ammonium to the gas phase. And finally, a PTR-TOFMS analyzes this gas phase organics by soft chemical ionization with hydronium ions. For better visibility, let's have a look at Ionicon's Caron PTR TOF prototype. To the left, you see a clip of the Caron particle inlet being mounted on top of one of our PTR TOF 6000X2 flagship instruments. To the right, I have added a simple scheme of Caron. Let's start with the particle injection. Continuously sampled air enters the Caron inlet tubing and reaches the particle searing system that allows for a scheduled switching between a direct and a HEPA particle filter inlet. Afterwards, volatile organic compounds plus humidity and ozone are removed by our gas phase denuder. This charcoal denuder is heatable and therefore can be easily regenerated, staying in the system without having the need to remove it. After a soft U-turn, the sample passes through a critical orifice and is accelerated into our high-pressure aerodynamic lens system. At pressures in the range of a few millibars, particles are collimated in the center of the aerodynamic lens system and are subsampled by a virtual impactor. Finally, the thermal desorber evaporates the particulate organics at moderate temperatures around 140 degrees Celsius and reduced pressures and guides the newly formed volatiles into our PTR-TOF-MS for analysis. Our thermal desorber is designed to completely volatilize ammonium sulfate particles. Compounds of lower volatility might only be volatilized partially. I have to add that our PTRMS standard VUC inlet stays completely in function and can be sequentially operated in combination with the Caron particle inlet. Let me add some details to the individual parts of Caron. The gas phase denuder consists of honeycomb activated carbon that transmits more than 95% of the particles and at the same time shows less than 4% of mass loss even for volatile particles. Volatile organics are efficiently absorbed. Typically more than 99.999% are removed. In addition, the gas phase denuder can remove quite some mass and, depending on humidi humidity, can be in continuous operation for several weeks. Once the activated carbon starts to show saturation, it can easily be regenerated in system 
by, for example, heating it to 120 degrees Celsius for a few hours. Now let's have a look at the particle enrichment capability of the aerodynamic lens system. The figure shows the particle diameter on the x-axis and the absolute particle enrichment factor on the y-axis. In red, measured enrichments for ammonium nitrate particles are plotted and in black I've added our CFD simulations. Caron offers a very stable particle enrichment factor in the size range between 150 and 1000 nanometers. Coupled to a PTL TOF 8000 instrument, this factor is in the range of 40. For sizes smaller than 150 nanometers, particles are not properly collimated to the center of the aerodynamic lens system. Therefore, the response is reduced. With these properties, Caron's size range is very much comparable to the one of TOF AMS instruments. With such a high particle enrichment factor, we boost the anyway already low limit of detection of modern generation PTR TOF AMS instruments to new levels. Our flagship PTR TOF 6000X2 reaches single minute limits of detection well within the 100 picogram per cubic meter range. In volume mixing ratios, this corresponds to unprecedented LODs of only some tens of parts per quadrillions. Even coupled to a lower sensitivity PTR TOF 8000, Caron still reaches LODs in the range of single digit nanograms per cubic meter per compound. These LODs are more than sufficient to characterize the organic fraction of submicrometer particles in urban and rural environments. Another important metric for analytical devices is the response time. For Caron PTRMS I can't give you a single number as it's dependent on the composition of the organic aerosol. If we look at the figure, I have plotted the 1 over E response time versus the saturation mass concentrations for a series of polycyclohalkanes and levoglucosan. The volatility range of the plotted compounds ranges from semi to low volatility. The higher the volatility is, the quicker is the instrumental response. For example, ammonium is detected within single seconds, whereas C31 polycycloalkanes show a 1 over E response within about one minute. Now let's have a look at the range of compounds that we can detect by Caron PTRMS. In urban non-refractory submicrometer particulate matter, we expect a big fraction of inorganic salts like ammonium nitrate and ammonium sulfate. The remaining organic fraction is typically subgrouped to certain sources. HOA stands for hydrocarbon-like organic aerosol. Typically, fresh vehicular emissions fall into this subgroup. SVOA stands for semi-volatile oxygenated organic aerosol. Part of this subgroup is fresh secondary organic aerosol. Low volatile oxygenated organic aerosol is typically composed of aged and transported highly oxidized compounds. The remaining fraction can contain a biomass burning aerosol, a cooking aerosol and several others. Caron PTR TOF MS can detect the biggest fraction of it. We can't detect sulfuric acid, but ammonium is detected as NH4 and nitrate as NO2+. From the organic fraction, we can detect virtually all, with maybe a small exception of a minor fraction of extremely low volatile oxygenated organic aerosol. Now let me add a so-called call plot. On the y-axis, the carbon oxidation state is plotted and on the x-axis, the number of carbon per molecule. I have added Caron data from measurements in Lyon, Valencia and Innsbruck and highlighted the data with a 95% mass enclosing ellipse in blue. Part of the ellipse are compounds like levoglucosan, pinic acid, condensed PAHs, fatty acids and lubricant oil polycycloalkanes. On the same plot I added the same 95% enclosing ellipse for VOC measurements. Notice there are still some compounds outside the ellipse, for example monoterpenes and sesquiterpenes, but they only make up less than 5% of the total mass concentration. 
If you compare the blue particle and the orange gas phase ellipses, the significantly increased range of compounds gets distinctly visible. Coming from VOCs and IVOCs, the Caron add-on extends the range of detected compounds to particulate semi- and low volatiles. Therefore, virtually all organic carbon can be measured with only one single instrument. I want to conclude this introduction to the Caron method with a quick example. This figure shows a typical wintertime pollution event here in Innsbruck. On the top panel, an average mass spectrum is plotted. I have highlighted some interesting compounds including ammonium nitrate, levoglucosan, lubricant oil and condensed PAHs. The middle panel shows the time series of these compounds. Notice ammonium stays very stable throughout the whole period. At around 7 am local time, the organics explode by about a factor of 10 within a few minutes. A big fraction of this is characterized by levoglucosan, a well-known biomass burning marker. But also lubricant oil and condensed pHs predominantly assigned to traffic emissions clearly increase. On the bottom panel I have plotted the results from SMPS measurements that clearly show a similar pattern. If you have any further questions, don't forget to check out these scientific publications that can be found together with more information on the Caron product homepage. Having that said, I hope you enjoyed the webinar. I'm looking forward to see you soon. For part 2 of the Caron webinar, I will present more details about recent applications. Great, thanks a lot Marcus for this perfect overview of Caron. I think we learned a lot about real-time aerosol sampling with our instruments today. So I'm really looking forward to the second part of your presentation. So finally, I just can say thank you to the viewers. I hope you tune in next time for part 2. And in the meantime, I wish you all the best from Ionicon. Thank you very much for watching this Ionicon webinar. As you are already sitting in front of your computer, take the opportunity and visit ionicon.com. On this website, you will find many useful information about PTRMS. For example, you can have a look at our current product portfolio and see the specifications of all our instruments. Maybe you are interested in your own personal showcase or just want to read about the analytical service we can provide. Our PTRMS publication database covers publications from various expert groups from all over the world. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to use the contact form or contact us in any other way you would like. So please go ahead and surf to ionicon.com.